My name's Micah uh, here moderating uh, on behalf of Colorado Startups. Um, really excited to kick off this conversation, convene, connect, and collab cal collaborate. So let's, let's break those down. We're convening, we're here, Denver Startup Week, this whole week is all about gathering together. We're hopefully connecting at these sessions, after these sessions. I think something that's really crucial I wanna emphasize is what happens after this week. So take all this energy that we're all having for this week and make partnerships, collaborate, find a co-founder, uh, you know, go out and do something together and let's take the energy from this week and keep building on it. Uh, so it's my privilege today to moderate uh, an amazing panel. Uh, we're gonna hear from some great speakers here. Uh, my background's in venture-backed startups, accelerators, uh, and, and startup tech space. Uh, so I'm often on panels with VCs, founders, and CEOs, and I love that we have a, a different subset of startup ecosystems, supporters, and collaborators. Um, Colorado, for a lot of you that know, is really recognized as one of the most collaborative states when it comes to business, working together, for-profit, non-profit, government, private sector, public sector. Um, so I, I wanna dig in and kinda emphasize that a little bit. Um, we're gonna hear about some programs and initiatives. Some you might have heard of these organizations. I'm sure you do, do not know all of the things, all the amazing things they do to support small businesses, entrepreneurship, uh, research and development here in the state. Um, so before we do this, I, I'm gonna do a little uh, interactive session, make sure you guys are all listening and awake. Uh, just to get a feel for who's in the room, uh, can I get by a show of hand, who identifies as an entrepreneur? Amazing, keep hands up. Who, who's a bootstrapped entrepreneur? You have not raised outside capital. Okay, who's gone the raising money route grants? Venture, friends and family, seed money. Okay, so we have a lot of bootstrapped entrepreneurs. Um, a quick uh, investors in the room. No invest. Okay, got some investors. Thank you. Uh, folks that work uh, government agency affiliated with the government. Okay, uh, nonprofits. All right, awesome. Um, students? Okay, great, good to see you guys here. Um, startup curious folks, just people are here hanging out? Yeah? Who else, anyone else major I'm missing? You didn't feel like you could raise your hand? Ecosystem builder, community builders? Awesome, love it. Um, and then a quick geography check. Who, who actually lives in Denver metro area? Locals, way to go. Uh, Boulder, Boulder County, Lafayette, technically. Um, front range, general, outside of Boulder, Denver, Metro, front range, cool. Rural Colorado? All right, they were all at West Slope Startup Week a few weeks ago, so they got enough fix there. Um, what about out of state? Anyone traveling out of state? Awesome, thank you guys for coming. Um, out of country? What country? Ireland? Amazing. Thank you for coming and uh, checking out the Denver ecosystem. That's pretty awesome. Um, cool. And then one last, one other question. Um, how long have you been in Colorado? Who's moved here in the past year? Okay. Since COVID, since 2020? Okay. 10 years? Who's been here since 2014? Yeah, I'm in that category too. Who was born and raised in Colorado? Woo! Yes, all right, awesome. Um, so a few kind of ground rules here. We're gonna hear a lot of acronyms today. I love a good acronym, but I've learned new acronyms just from introducing these organizations. So use your acronym, but at least your first time, let's break out what that acronym means for the whole room and like define some stuff for some common language here. Um, so we're actually gonna go through, we're gonna get a really quick hit from our four panelists on some resources, some State of the Union from them, uh, and then we're gonna go into panel and then we're gonna open up to Q&A. So if you have questions, write them down, make a note, uh, and we'll come back to them at the end. Um, so first up, it's my pleasure to introduce Laura Rodriguez from OEdit, the Office of Economic Development and Technology. Yes? And trade. Okay. 
Can everyone hear me? Great. So I think the acronym comment was directed towards me because we got a few of them in, in government. Um, yeah, so I'm with the Colorado Office of Economic Development and International Trade. Um, we are a part of the governor's office. Um, we support economic development um, across the state and we have a variety of divisions within our organization. So we um, do everything from supporting early stage companies, um, establishing companies that are looking to relocate or expand in Colorado. Um, we have the Colorado Creative Industries where we support um, creatives and we have um, programs for affordable housing um, and creative space. Uh, we, we support um, the film industry. We uh, also house the Small Business Development Center um, and we have 14 centers across the state as well. So we do a lot, um, but for the purpose of this conversation, I really want to talk about our support for early stage companies. Um, so we have the SBDC, so Small Business De Development Center, um, and again, 14 across the state of Colorado, and they really provide ground level support to businesses of really any size. They could be early stage, they could be mature, um, and for the early stage, we have a variety of programs. We have the Leading Edge program um, that really helps on business planning and development. We, there's mentorship opportunities. And so it's a really great resource um, that you can access in Denver, Boulder, or really um, in any, any community. Uh, we have the Advanced Industry Accelerator Grant. So this is a non-dilutive grant for companies that are, um, this one specifically, the early stage, is for companies that are looking at, at the point of where they're wanting to commercialize, and it's 200 and it could be up to $250,000, and it's a competitive grant, and it does require a match, um, and it is a competitive process. So you do, you apply, and you pitch, and, um, but what's really great is oftentimes um, these companies are able to leverage also the advanced industry investment tax tax credit. So, you know, for $250,000 of state funding, they do have to get a $500,000 match in third-party capital. And through the advanced industry tax credit, um, companies in advanced industries um, can register and essentially they get um, investors that are investing in the, those companies can get a 25% tax credit. Um, for up to $100,000 with a minimum of $10,000 investment. So it's a great way for us to match our grant, pro um, our grant program to um, leveraging third-party capital to really spur growth in those companies. Um, another early stage opportunity is we have the Cash for Collateral program. And so the state funds can be held as cash deposits by lenders um, on loans. So the lenders can apply for up to 25% of the loan amount. And so this really allows for borrowers to meet lenders' requirements when they may not be able to. So this is a really great opportunity opportunity um, for businesses on, on the lending side. Um, and now I want to go into some things that have been in the news recently um, and how Colorado is involved and really the origin story of um, the federal funding that we're seeing coming to the state of Colorado. So back in 2019, the Brookings Institute um, developed this research report, the case for growth centers across America. And what they found is that one third of innovation jobs were in 16 counties in the United States. Um, so you look at you know, where those jobs were. It was in Seattle, the Bay Area, San Diego, and Boston primarily. And so the rest of the country wasn't experiencing those same innovation jobs. Um, and in fact, it, you know, it led to brain drain. So you have, um, you know, you always hear about this in an international setting where you have the brightest and best going to other countries. Well, it was, the same thing was happening in the United States. So you had the brightest and best going to specific areas in the country country, and that also has negative externalities because, you know, in these areas you have increased um, housing prices, more traffic, higher cost of living, and then the rest of the United States isn't capturing those innovation jobs. And so 
um, you know, during, you know, post this report and throughout the COVID recovery, the U.S. government looked at what they can do, and so they really um, made the biggest investment in um, industrial policy since post-World War II. And so we saw a lot of that funding come through in the CHIPS Act. And um, being a part of the governor's office, the governor was like, how can we get the most money for Colorado? Um, and if you see on this map, we have a little bit under 0.4% growth in Denver, and then the rest of the growth um, was negative in terms of innovation jobs um, during the time period of this report. So we went, okay, how can we get the innovation jobs to Colorado? Um, and so really what we focused on was there were different federal funding opportunities. You had Build Back Better. Um, there was a Colorado application did, that did not go through. Um, you have the NSF engine, so the National Science Foundation engines. Um, and we did receive um, funding for that. So Innisfere, Mike Friedman at Innisfere in Fort Collins um, submitted a application. It's a Colorado um, the Colorado Wyoming um, Climate Resilience Engine. Um, and they did receive funding. They got $160 million over 10 years. Um, and there's a whole coalition that's that's working behind it to really um, push the climate resilient technologies. Then we also had um, several applications from Colorado apply for tech hubs. Um, so there's two parts of that application. You have um, the designation of being called a tech hub, and then you have the actual funding associated with that. So we had um, a coalition, we had two coalitions, the Colorado Clean, Lane, Clean Range Coalition. Um, they applied um, for a tech hub designation, um, and then we had the Quantum Consortium, the Elevate Quantum, apply for tech hub designation. Uh, we at the state, we had a competitive process where we learned and build back better if we wrote letters of support for all the applications, we weren't competitive. So we had a competitive application where um, the most competitive projects, we would sign off a letter of support. So those were the two that we signed off. We had other applications, however, from Colorado. Um, in December, the EDA, the Economic D Development Administration, announced that Colorado won the designation for the Quantum Tech Hub, which was great news, and my um, counterpart, Daniel Riley, will go into more of the industry technologies that are a part of um, that consortium, but we also won it with Chicago. So Chicago also won the Tech Hub designation, so we had to apply for the funding, and we were competing against Chicago for the funding. Um, Ultimately, in July, we, they made the announcement of uh, who received the funding, and Colorado was the only tech hub, the quantum tech hub, to receive funding. So Chicago didn't receive any, but um, they still have a, the, the technology there. So we got um, just around $40 million of funding, um, and that allowed for $1 billion of private capital investment within the consortium. And then the state of Colorado gave just over $77 million of funding in various forms, which I'll, I'll, one of them was um, capital construction. So we have funding set aside to build a physical building um, where research, um, commercial, commercialization, and the um, startups can, to, can work out of, um, and then another program. Um, so that was really great news um, for Colorado. So back to what are we doing to leverage the funding? Um, through the CHIPS Act, um, we want to make sure that Colorado gets funding for semiconductor and suppliers in semiconductors. So we create a chip zone. So any semiconductor company located in a, um, in a uh, chip zone has access to tax credits. Um, we also have companies, if they're not in a zone, but they are chips related, have access to refundable tax credits. Um, and then something that the state's not leading, but Mike Freeman at Sphere is on the NSF engines. If you are um, a company, a startup in any of these um, 
with any of these type of technologies that you're working on, methane emissions, soil carbon capture, earth sensing, water scarcity, wildfires, and extreme weather. You can actually go online right now to the Colorado Wyoming Engine website and apply to, to participate in their accelerator. So that's open right now. Um, and then lastly, we do have for quantum companies, um, we're, we're getting it kicked off the ground, is a um, to improve capital access to capital, 15% um, of a loan um, can be registered um, with the lender in a loan loss reserve pool. And so if the lender re um, receives any losses on that, they can get 100% tax refund. So it's really de-risking and providing an opportunity for the quantum companies to um, get funds that they need to, to grow. So that's what we're doing at the state level, and um, that's it. Awesome. Thank you, Laura, for the great overview. Uh, Daniel, come on up and let's run through it. Good tee up from, from your colleague there. Yeah, thank you. And thank you, Laura. And uh, State of Colorado is a great partner of ours. Uh, Daniel Riley, Vice President of Corporate Attraction with Metro Denver EDC. Uh, we are a nonprofit that is the Economic Development Authority for the Front Range of Colorado, which is 11 counties from the Wyoming border down to Colorado Springs. Uh, that region encapsulates 80% of the state's population, 85% of the state's GDP. And our mission is to really facilitate the inflow of corporate investment in partnership with the state of Colorado and over 100 communities in that region to identify qualified real estate and help these companies land facilities that create meaningful jobs and careers in our communities uh, and a meaningful tax base. Uh, the startup ecosystem, though, however, is, is also very important to us because it's a part of the talent innovation engine that really provides a great landing spot for these corporations that are looking at expanding their facilities or relocating a headquarters. Um, and I am fortunate to follow Laura because uh, we can expand a little bit and drill down on some of the, th some of the things we talked about. Um, at the EDC, we actually house the Denver Metro Small Business Development Center. So Laura mentioned the SBDCs is one of the resources through the state. Uh, there is a full service SBDC right here uh, in Denver Metro. It's part of a network of many uh, SBDCs across the state that you can connect to. It is kind of an open door. Uh, no matter where you are, you can call any SBDC, and those services are available universally throughout the state, no matter where you're located. You can hop around if you're moving around uh, from one place to another and continue the services you're getting through the SBDC. But uh, it's so important to Colorado, 99 and, and a percent, higher than 99 percent of Colorado's businesses are technically a small business defined by 500 or less employees. A very large majority of those are what we would call micro-businesses. These 50 uh, employees or less, 20, 30 employees that really need the support of the ecosystem and the resources that are provided through uh, the community by and at large in partnership sometimes with uh, organizations like ours, but really the full network of, uh, of players that uh, are many in this room and, and that were referenced. Um, and by MICA, you know, nonprofits, universities, uh, corporations, all working together to support innovation and growth organically within our state. Um, the SBDC in Metro Denver, just to give you a taste of what's going on there, uh, saw a thousand clients last year. Um, that is mostly one-on-one -on -one direct advising with the network of SBDC advisors that are experts in a specific realm of business, whether it's finance or taxes or marketing or a specific industry that you're in, and that is absolutely free. There is no cost to you to meet with those advisors uh, and get plugged into the wealth of information and knowledge and really have a true mentor along your journey for growth and development in our region. So uh, if you're not working with the SBDC, uh, definitely come and connect. There is a few, I would say, um, kind of uh, misperceptions about that. One is that it's not for existing established companies. If you are an existing established company, uh, you're welcome to participate. Again, if you're under that 500 employee threshold, come and work with us. Uh, there is something to learn and, and, and absorb and grow from, um, as well as if uh, you are in any industry. So if you are a small retailer, if you're acquiring uh, an HVAC company from your boss, if you are uh, looking at the gig economy, 
if you're e-commerce, if you are just kind of exploring all the different options, uh, there is a entry point for you and resources available and a great network to plug into like-minded people and the rest of the, the, the ecosystem here uh, in the community. Uh, expanding on some of the things Laura talked about as well, these are just a few of our partners. Uh, it kind of drilling down into how you can actually engage in these, these um, partnerships and the opportunities created. That Colorado, Wyoming, that's the climate resiliency. Uh, the charge there is to create 22,000 jobs in Colorado and Wyoming in the next 10 years in climate resiliency. That's cultivating, establishing a new industry that really doesn't exist. It's not to be confused with clean tech or, or green tech. It's really the, the facets that Laura mentioned in her slides around uh, measuring and monitoring technologies, earth sensing, this is space imaging related stuff, uh, really deep, digging into deep tech to advance how communities are going to be more resilient resilient and protecting themselves from things we cannot control, uh, that 22,000 jobs is going to come from organic startup growth. Um, I'm going to do my best to go out and convince companies to move to Colorado, uh, but it's not going to be 22,000 jobs. It's going to be all of you in this room who are collectively creating that, and so we really want to pour resources and support into those. Uh, quantum Tech Hub, 11,000 jobs in the next 10 years through that quantum computing and quantum cooling tower supply chain network, and that's going to span from everything to research in design to the actual component manufacturing, the, the folks operating the CNC machines that are going to be uh, pr producing specific uh, pieces of a larger product in a supply chain. Uh, lots of great resources and grants available to help kickstart these companies attached to really robust infrastructure networks around research, uh, the top scientists in the world on both the climate resiliency and the quantum, and really tr truly accelerate these startup ideas help them commercialize, help them scale, and help them really take root in Colorado. That's, that's the goal. Um, the Smart Cities Alliance is the last one on there. That's right here. The Smart Futures uh, Hub is at uh, CU Denver. Uh, that's really working in the infra, infra tech system, and so that's the Internet of Things, uh, sensors and different things like that. So those are just a few examples of the key opportunities that our startup uh, community can plug into and, and really get the funding that we need. Uh, last thing I want to touch on is, and Micah mentioned it, Colorado might be the best culture uh, for this type of work because we are uniquely collaborative. Uh, there is no wrong door, we like to say in Colorado, whether you're a corporation or startup coming in, you talk to anyone in this room, anyone in this network or the people you're hearing from today, they will gladly introduce you in one degree of separation to the person or organization you need to be working with to take that next step. We do not hoard our intelligence and our IP uh, from a community and network standpoint. Standpoint, we love to share and introduce folks and make sure that you're well plugged in uh, and, and taking the path of least resistance to success. It's just part of our DNA here in Colorado. So uh, this just kind of showcases the region that uh, we represent, showing that all these communities are working together on your behalf and your benefit uh, as an example of that, that collaborative ecosystem we have. So uh, with that, I'll turn it back over to you, Michael. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, there's very much a rising tide raises all boat mentality, and if you do it right, the person won't just introduce you to one person, they'll make three connections and you'll just perpetually have people to meet with, so keep that in mind. Thanks, Michael. Go for it. Great. I feel like I need somebody to keep track of how many times I use the word collaboration in my speech up here. Uh, I'm Michael Beavis. I'm the Director of Innovation and Entrepreneurship for the City of Denver. So I would say the short version of that is it's my job to create an ecosystem here in Denver that allows entrepreneurs to thrive. So think of that as connecting them to programming, resources, mentorship, access to capital. If you want to know where the cool kids hang out, it's a Samantha's group, uh, Denver Founders, later tonight. So she'll show you where the free beer is. Um, we have a motto in our office, so I work for Denver Economic Development Opportunity. We have a motto in our office. If you're a startup, a grow up, a scale up, whatever stage of journey you are on, you should start with us because um, we can get you plugged into the resources, right? So I make connections to my partner panelist up here on a daily basis, um, and it's our job to kind of connect you there. So one of the things I always say is that if the resources don't exist in our community, then it's my job to create them. 
them. And I don't have enough time to tell you all the things that we've created in the last few years, but I'm going to touch on, on three of them. So one is we recently opened a free entrepreneurship center in a different part of downtown neighborhood in Park Hill neighborhood. Um, so it's exactly what it sounds like. So free desk, free Wi-Fi, free coffee, come in, connect with other founders, convene, right? I think convene is one of the words in our title slide here. And we offer a ton of programming out of there. One of the programs that we offer there is a program called Tech Up. So think of that as like a three-year-long support mechanism program to support founders who are interested in creating businesses in the tech space. So think like a pre-accelerator phase, an accelerator phase, and a post-accelerator phase. We partner on that program with a local nonprofit that runs the pre-accelerator program called Access Mode. We partner with a local university in here uh, that created 15 courses for our entrepreneurs, and they can take anywhere from one to all 15 of those courses free of charge. And then for seven years now, I've been running a program at the city that we call the Denver Scale-Up Network. We refer to that as a post-accelerator program. So think of it. Um, we're only working with founders that are typically in market. They typically have traction of about one to three million dollars in annual recurring revenue, and they're just kind of stuck. So we say the purpose of that program is to help them solve their three biggest pain points so they can achieve a level of scale to push them into middle market category. So 10, 20, 50 million a year in annual recurring revenue. Because statistically speaking, that's where companies thrive. Uh, they can weather the storm of an economic downturn, and they create more than 45% of all jobs across the state. That program is 100% free and we accept companies from all across Colorado. We offer a handful of uh, funding programs including debt financing and equity programs. Um, we offer a ton of early stage programming, so um, online, uh, how, how to build a business from scratch. And again, we are always connecting you to the resources that exist in our ecosystem. So with that, I'll give the rest of our panelists some time back. Nice. Thank you. And last but not least, Courtney, thank you. Always hard to go last when you've got such great content. Um, Courtney Garrett, I'm the president and CEO of the Downtown Denver Partnership. We are a private member and community-based nonprofit, and we work in the intersection of the public sector and the private sector. Our programs are far and wide. We're focused on place-based economic development. So why am I standing up here as a resource to all of you? When we run security programs, we recruit business, we bring people to live, we bring people to visit, we do all of these things that, as my mother describes, anything and everything that has to do with downtown, you touch somehow, which is really incredible. But a huge part of that is the innovation, the entrepreneurship community, and how that is a cornerstone of our industry. So those of you who joined us here yesterday afternoon for some of the opening plenary sessions, you know we just produced the startup report. And we are absolutely thrilled that the headline continues to be that Denver is still a powerhouse for our innovation, entrepreneurship, and startup community. So it's really incredible. You see some of the statistics here. We continue to be the first best state for women entrepreneurs. Seventh, right? Yes. I personally love that one. Uh, seventh best market for tech talent in the US. I'm reading for those of you who, like me, didn't bring their glasses. Fifth largest tech economic impact as of a percentage of the overall state economy. Let that one sit in for a minute. And the eighth, we're ranked eighth as most new tech business establishments. So again, we're continuing to see the same type of momentum that this community has been known for nationally. We can flip to the next one, please. How does that manifest? Well, we are also at the Downtown Denver Sh Partnership not only proud to be title sponsors of Denver Startup Week, but we are also the infrastructure, the organization that works with our amazing founders, our amazing community organizing committee to bring this forward to showcase our community. And you can see here, in 2023, 220 sessions, over 11,000 attendees. We're going to beat that this year, right? It's not over yet, friends. Bring, bring more, bring more, right? 42 states represented and 4,675 companies represented. That is the strength of this community. We'll go to the next one. So at the partnership, and, and I said this yesterday as well, we are 
such supporters and believe so much in Denver Startup Week, and we believe in supporting this community year-round. So some of the ways that we do that are examples like our Pop-Up Denver program, where we are working with local entrepreneurs to grow business. We recruit new business to Denver, and we want to grow our own locally owned businesses in Denver. So we're providing grants, we're providing free space so that entrepreneurs can come and test their ideas in a variety of ways, whether it's a cool push cart or an actual storefront to test their ideas and really allow that low barrier entry to micro retail in our downtown core. We've granted over a million dollars in business support grants and that's in partnership and collaboration with our friends at the City of Denver Economic Development Department, and we're doing some really cool things. I'll give a plug for upcoming. Please meet Sarah Wiebenson on our team. She's driving so much of this work. We have a speed dating, a speed dating um, little event coming up. You can see it is Thursday from 11 to noon, where we're matching entrepreneurs with offices who are looking for tenants to come in these owners who understand that in order to draw business, in order to continue to build our downtown economy, we need, again, low barriers to entry. So we've got property owners and brokers matched with new businesses coming in and doing speed dating. It's gonna be really exciting. So please join us for that. Awesome. And that's my speed dating. Thank you, appreciate it. Um, I'm gonna call the panel up and I have a request from the audience. Can we give them like a rock star round of approval? Yes! I feel like everyone wants to come up on the stage to just a uh, standing ovation. Uh, all right, so we're gonna jump into some like rapid fire questions. I wanna make sure we have about 10 minutes at the end for questions from all of you. Um, I know there was a lot of information that was just thrown at you. I think that just, these, these are four organizations that are doing so, so much. Um, that we should all be leveraging, we should all be collaborating afterwards. So I hope you took some pictures, can come up after and, and leverage these resources, sometimes free, non-dilutive, money, resources, office space, things. So um, thank you all for, for what you're doing. Um, let's jump into it, Laura, I'll start with you. Um, so there's a lot of resources uh, that you guys have available um, for early stage companies as well as growth and later. Can you talk about you know, just a few of them as far as funding, um, funding support, other resources, and define how small or how big you could be to take advantage of some of those? Yeah. Can you hear me? Do a tap. Hello? Yeah, so, um, yeah, like I mentioned, um, the Advanced Industry Accelerator Grant is really a great, a great starting point um, for companies that are looking at um, really that commercialization um, and, and really getting their, um, their product up and running and, and commercialized. Uh, however, after that stage, um, we have an export grant. So those companies, they've commercialized um, their, their product. Uh, we have support where we have grants where they can we can offset some of the costs related to um, like travel. So if you're looking to go to an international trade show, um, if you're looking for um, a assistance on meeting perhaps with like p potential suppliers, partners abroad, uh, we have a grant to offset that. Um, and then additionally, once you're like past that stage, um, we have uh, an incentive um, for companies that are looking at creating 20 jobs or more. Uh, and probably, you know, also, it's also a requirement that you have to be looking outside the state as well. So that's a competitive um, tax credit where um, we want to make sure that we are having Colorado companies expand and stay in Colorado. So we really try to get the life cycle of that early stage um, and then that growth where they're looking out past Colorado and then really capturing the company's expansion. And, uh, that's a good, that's a good there we go. Test, test, test. Can you hear me? Here, let me sure. I have a loud voice anyways. Uh, here. Um, 
the panel we were on earlier, you talked, was the resource from OEdit that you can put in the stage of your company and it'll tell you all the resources. What was that resource we heard about earlier? Yeah, so we're working on that. We have um, just like a whole spectrum. Um, and it's different. Like some of our programs are grant-based. Some of them are debt-based. And so it's really, you know, wherever you are, we, we probably have something. And if not, we can direct you to the appropriate um, organizations or partners that do. Um, but you can always reach out to me. Um, I have colleagues in the audience as well, and so we're always happy to, to meet with companies and just make sure that you're in the right direction as, in terms of like what the state can offer in, in assistance. It is fun to go down the OEDIT rabbit hole of some pages of all of the resources and then linking out. Uh, we, we've stumbled across those a little bit. So yeah. um, Awesome. If you're with OEDIT, raise your hand to sweep. Others. Cool, so come find some more up folks after. Um, next one for you, Michael. Um, we're, we're talking about collaboration, collaboration, collaboration. Can you talk about um, how your office works with other agencies represented either in, on this panel or otherwise around government, nonprofit, for profit, education, public, private? You name it. Yep. So we, I have a team of two other people that work in, in my division uh, of innovation and entrepreneurship in the Office of Economic Development and Opportunity. And collectively, between the three of us, we meet with about 4,000 unique businesses for one-on-one -on -one, uh, advisory work every year. Um, and what we're doing in that conversation is really assessing the need of the business and trying to connect them to the right resource. So the panel I was on actually right before this was a, co a collection of service providers and ecosystem builders all up and down the front range of Colorado. So we don't just limit it uh, to Denver. Obviously, we provide a lot of support and we and we like to support businesses in Denver. Um, but if you need a resource in a different community all across Colorado, we do that on a pretty regular basis. Uh, one of my employees has been with the city now for 20 years. She's an incredible wealth of knowledge. So sometimes even I still reach out to her um, and ask for some context to pass along to an entrepreneur. And I have been an entrepreneur my entire life. I'm currently the CEO of a company because I always say I have to practice what I preach. So, and I have more college degrees than I like to admit in public. So I know a thing or two. We call that eating your own dog food. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Courtney, uh, Denver's been gaining a lot of recognition as not just a tech hub, various tech hubs, a, a hub of tech hubs. Um, from downtown Denver partnerships perspective, how does the city's tech talent pool um, compared to other major markets and what's a unique advantage uh, we can offer to startups and establish tech companies. I'll add an adage that when I graduated from college, data science was the sexiest job of 2014. <laughs> so everyone wanted to go be a data scientist. Uh, we've evolved a little bit in 10 years. Can you, can you walk us through what the talent pool looks like? Yeah, yeah, and I appreciate that. Um, you know, first of all, and again, I really encourage you to dig into the startup report to dive into the different sectors. But again, overarching, we are consistently in the top 10 spot for tech talent. And we just moved, according to a recent CBRE report, from number 10 to number 8. So we're constantly moving back and forth in that. And you kind of think, why? I think a huge part of that is quality of place. When we look at particularly in urban areas that are predisposed to have the type of, we call it serendipitous collisions, where your condo or your apartment is close to the cafe, which is close to the entrepreneur's center, which is close to the Fortune 500 company who may be looking to invest, these urban environments naturally lend themselves to the, these serendipitous collisions. I mean, think about Denver Startup Week and how many of you have made connections just within these first couple of days. I mean, that is truly, I think, something that's special about where we are in the center city. And then you layer on to that just the overall draw of Colorado. Why do most of us start our own businesses? Because we want some kind of quality of life. Now, do we leave ourselves time for it always? No. But it's nice to know that it's at our fingertips. And that's a lot of the feedback that we hear, again, as this place-based organization, that we build the environment in which businesses can thrive and people find opportunities. So I think that's one of our greatest competitive advantages is truly quality of place. 300 days of sun doesn't, doesn't hurt uh, to bring people here. 100%. Uh, thanks, Courtney. Uh, Daniel, we were talking a little bit about all the federal funding uh, that Colorado has received, has applied for. So I'd like to start with you, and I think Laura might have some thoughts too on 
what, what this federal funding means for the future of Colorado, our industries, our branding, and, and what you're most excited about. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. And, and I'll just real quick tack on to that, too. Colorado just elevated to number one ranking nationally as far as uh, saturation of educated residents. So over half of the residents in Colorado have a post uh, high school credential or degree. Um, the downside that is, is we were relying a lot on importing that talent, but it lends to your your point that it's a great place to live. So we're continually trying to convince that talent to move here, but it is very attractive for corporations and startups to look at that talent base, but just a great stat for us to celebrate today. Um, and it does lend to, I think, your question, Micah, about uh, what I'm excited about. So I get really excited about ecosystems and um, organic energy and, and things in our community that are driving innovation and driving investment uh, that is leading to really significant changes in both the technological, technological world and the products and services available to us as, a, as human beings, but uh, the opportunities that creates for our residents to have very meaningful career and employment opportunities uh, at very high wages that, that are somewhat life-changing when folks can enter those career pathways. And the convergence that we're starting to see as Colorado becoming this destination, it, it's very historical that we're seeing this type of federal funding inflow into our state. Uh, and, and, you know, the credit really goes to these partners that have come together uh, like Innisphere and like Elevate Quantum to really uh, take a, a big leap in going after big money and putting ourselves out there in competition with other uh, markets that tend to win these deals, uh, other big, big city markets across the U.S. Um, all kind of happening simultaneously. We're going to see this uh, compound effect, I think, a critical mass developing that's going to be magnetic and attracting more investment, more talent, more companies, more corporations that want to attach to that and spinning off that talent and innovation uh, into more and more technologies and startups and it's just going to continue building. I think we're at a very, very special time and place in Colorado because of that. The um, Specifically, the quantum tech hub, you know, that is, uh, you know, disruptive technology to say the least. Um, climate resiliency is definitely a, d a new industry, emerging industry, something we hadn't thought about before as an industry, but quantum's obviously, uh, you know, very, very unique in uh, the science and what that's going to mean for the entire world. And if Colorado is the state and the US is the nation to really crack that code, uh, it will be a complete game changer for our uh, economic development, the opportunities for the people who live here, and our national security for uh, the next several hundred years, in my opinion. Yeah, so. And you mentioned brand um, and uh, how this federal funding plays into that. Um, so we did two major research projects this year. Um, first, back in January, February, we sent out a survey to businesses across the state, um, those that were registered with the Secretary of State's office, um, really trying to understand Colorado as a service provider, we're pro providing a place where um, businesses can operate. Um, what is our value proposition? So you have the benefits, what you get from the community, so access to talent, infrastructure, universities, um, business climate. You have the brand or reputation um, that was um, a community where there is um, where there is a recognition of success and failure, it's entrepreneurial, it's risk taking, um, where you're perceived as having a positive business climate, and then the challenges um, or the costs associated with operating in Colorado. So that's your traffic, your commute, um, government related activities such as taxes, regulation, um, the cost of housing, the cost of living. And so what we found is 44% of business owners' satisfaction or dissatisfaction in Colorado was derived from the reputation. Um, so with that, we're like, okay, this is, we know that this is important. Let's dive into it more. Um, and at the same time, there were things happening in, in Colorado, especially in the VC investment space. We're like, we, we don't, 
we don't want any more challenges. We want to be making sure, we want to make sure that we're attracting investment. So we did interviews both with investors in Colorado and outside of Colorado, um, and we did the same thing, the costs, the benefits, the reputation. And so in that reputation component um, within the investment community, one of the things where we were doing well, and that was important, was industry-focused messaging. Um, and so that goes back to our tech hub. So like the focus on quantum, the so focus on climate resilience, the focus on chips. Um, so having the rest of the country know there are industries where we have a competitive strength is really important, and it gets the attention of investors. On the other hand, um, you know, we're economic developers, so we're giving these stats every day, all day, talking about the state. Um, but a lot of investors don't know these stats. And so Colorado isn't necessarily perceived outside of the state as being this hub. Um, and so, you know, back in 2015, 16, going to Denver Startup Week, you heard that Colorado humble. So our businesses are humble. Um, that's just kind of the way we are. The business leaders are humble. And so one thing that we took away is how do we shift that mentality to make sure that our startups, our founders are really promoting the state and talking about the community? Yeah. I, I think encompassing both of those is like inevitabilities of technology I think about a lot and if you think about things that are just not going to change we're going to be using more compute and resources in the future than we are now quantum makes a ton of sense to invest in we're going to need different and alternative sources to energy and clean energy um, you know aerospace these are inevitabilities it's not not a matter of if we're going to do these things it's when and we're really accelerating that that you know, we know where, where it's happening in Colorado, which is awesome, uh, as soon as humanly possible. So, um, one last question for Courtney, then we're gonna um, maybe do a quick rapid fire and then get it like one or two questions in. Um, we're here at Denver Startup Week. This is a huge undertaking that Downtown Denver Partnerships helps make happen. You guys are a major convener. Can you talk about the rest of the year, how, how you guys are making space, how people can leverage Downtown Denver Partnerships as a, a convening, platform and node of the community. Well, I mean, first of all, really taking advantage of Denver Startup Week. I mean, this is such a prime example of how we bring the community together, whether it's connecting VC with founders, whether it's connecting an office building owner with a new business. I mean, we, as I said, we sit in this intersection of the public sector and the private sector and help to make those connections. So I think that's such an important piece of what we do. So it's Denver Startup Week. It's the pop-up program that I mentioned, and it's truly what our team Sarah and Julia are doing every day. So in the same way that we've said, hands raised for OEdit, hands raised for EDC, hands raised for City and County of Denver, like we are all here to help support this community. So just please, please, please take advantage of it because we're at a moment in time, you know, how can we engage with you in the greater mission for downtown Denver, Denver, Metro Denver, and Colorado? Obviously, cities have had a really challenging time over the last four years, five years, sometimes longer in many cases. And this is such a sector that's driving our economy that you think about traditional industry that's contracting that has typically driven cities, oil and gas. Um, law, finance, a lot of professional services. So as those industries are contracting, we're seeing you all expand. So it is 100% in our self-interest too that we see you succeed. So please take advantage of us because I think it's just such an important piece for each and every one of your individual businesses, since we do have mostly founders here, as well as just the overall state of Colorado and our economy that we're so proud of. And, and riffing on that, we all win together, a win for your business, you're growing, you're scaling, you get acquired, you know, you hit a milestone, you go public. That's a win for the entire state of Colorado that we're celebrating and helping each other. Um, that, that is a competitive advantage of this community that is really hard to replicate and I think very, a very um, stark difference from some of our um, you know, larger cities on that, that map you showed that they don't have the collaborative energy and spirit that we have here. So like, thanks to everyone in this room for coming and making all that happen. Um, we have probably one question. If, does anyone have a rapid fire, anything burning? Otherwise I'll let the panel wrap it up. Oh, we have 10 more minutes. Yeah. 
Uh, while we're, while we're yeah. searching for uh, questions, I'm, I'm just going to put a plug into for the, just glo the global ecosystem that we have here in Colorado. So is the, is the person here from Ireland still here? We board, no? we okay. board him with all this Colorado. Time. Okay. I was, I was going to ask if they flew over on Aer Lingus, but um, if that was the case, then I was going to say looking across all the agencies represented here, you're welcome. Uh, because they work collaboratively to make that connection happen, and we continue to do that on a regular basis. I see a couple of my colleagues over here that work in the global division for DITO um, and supporting, helping those companies come here. So, yeah, sorry. We, we, there's a direct Denver to Dublin flight, which uh, is pretty awesome. Um, all right, closing now we have one minute. Uh, in one sentence or less, you have a billboard. Everything we've talked about today or otherwise, you have a billboard that these people in this room can walk away with. What's your, your one thing on this billboard that's on 36 uh, going <laughs> to Boulder? <laughs> oh, uh, I, I would just say thank you, right? Thank you to the businesses and the startups that take risk. I think. A lot of people in the general community, our elected officials, uh, they understand the ROI analogy, the lemon, lemonade stand analogy pretty good. They don't understand the risk. They don't understand that you could lose everything if this goes wrong. Um, we understand that, we appreciate it. Uh, we've started businesses ourselves, and Michael said it, he's actively running one. It is fundamentally critical that we empathize with our business and small business startup community to understand what's on the line for you. And if we don't do a good job in the regulatory environment, in the resource environment, in the networking and connectivity environment, you could lose it all. And because of that, uh, from our perspective at the EDC and the, the Denver Metro Chamber, we are forever grateful for that risk that you're choosing to take and choosing our community to take that risk in. So Daniel's billboard says thank you, and then a lot of text that we can't read on the book. But yes, I, I agree with Thank you, and a QR code. Exactly, yeah. a QR code yeah. to learn more. Uh, one sentence, because I'm getting the wrap-up, uh, of what your billboard's going to say. Um, mine would say engage in your community, um, and it's because you're not here operating alone. We have the resources to really, you know, give you what you need or um, provide assistance. So you're not here alone. Mine would just be uh, the most collaborative state in the country. That's good. Drop the mic. <laughs> I know, I'm like, I don't want to take that. us home. It's say challenge breeds opportunity and innovation. Help us move forward. Awesome. Well, thank you to this awesome panel. All the employees, all the colleagues who do so much work. Uh, thank you all.